Hi guys, since my blueberry cheesecake was a huge hit, I've decided to make little tiny cheesecake bites. And I've made these in different flavors, and I'm going to show you how I made each and every one of these. Let's begin! Let me start off by saying if you want this exact mold, you can get this at your local Michaels, or you can order it online. Now if you don't have a mold, that's completely okay. I'm going to show you here how to make one out of scrap polymer clay. All you're going to need is a cap of your choice. Just make sure it has the lines around the top. You're going to place it in some baby powder. This is just going to help so it doesn't stick. And then you can just push it into your mold. Now as you can see, that baby powder just helped it come right out. And it didn't stick. And now you can bake it and use it just like you would a silicone mold. Just make sure that you use baby powder in between each time that you use it. So as you can see here, I've just taken some white polymer clay and I filled it inside the mold. And then I've taken some of this beige crust color and I've just placed it right on the top of that. You wanna leave a little bit of space in between the white just so you have enough room to smush down that crust. I went ahead and measured these out into little discs before I did this just to make this tutorial a little quicker for you. I also added some liquid polymer clay in between the white and the crust. You do not have to do this. I just did this to ensure that it's not gonna come off later. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this last one up here and then set it in the freezer for 15 minutes. For the marble cheesecake, you're going to take a color of your choice and use that white base and mix those two colors together into a long candy cane and then you'll roll it up into a ball and then that should give you that marble effect. If it doesn't give you the effect that you want, you're gonna keep doing it until you get that effect. Now we're just gonna go ahead and go back after freezing those cheesecakes and remove them all. Popping in the freezer just helps ensure that when you take them out and you have to do the crust, that it's not gonna smush or smudge. It also helps with fingerprints. And for the crust of the cheesecake, you're just going to take a small needle or a needle tool and you're going to start doing little tiny circles. Now, if there is a secret to doing this, it's not just making circles and making holes. When you make a hole, you want to make sure that you place little tiny pieces back inside. If you make little holes, this won't look like real cheesecake. You really want it to have a realistic look. So by doing this, as you can see, I have a little bit of crumbs, I would say, on the end of my needle, and I'm just moving and placing those back as I go. Go ahead and finish the rest of your cheesecake crusts. Now that you've finished all of your cheesecake crust, you can go ahead and start adding your glaze. Now for the glaze, I have linked a tutorial down below, so you can go ahead and check out how I made it. And I've also linked the tutorial on how to make all the goodies, the nuts, the chocolate, and sprinkles, and whatever you would like to put on there. Go ahead and check that out in the link in the description below. Now for this one, I'm just going to start adding some Flux chocolate chips and all I'm doing is pushing them inside and placing them where I want to go. And then I'm just going to place some of my chocolate glaze over the top. The best way to do this is just to go back and forth. There's no wrong way to do this. I would say though, don't overdo it because if you overdo it, it doesn't look the greatest. So just go back and forth and side to side and you should get the desired effect that you want. And you can just take a toothpick and pick it up. Now for the peanut butter one, all I did was add some nuts and I pushed them down inside. You wanna make sure that they're in there pretty snug just so they won't come out later. You can also add some oven baked clean adhesive just to make sure they don't come out. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my famous peanut butter and I'm gonna get some on this little brush here and I'm going to repeat the same thing again. Again, I'm not going to be adding too much just so I can get that drizzled look. If you're struggling with the drizzle technique, all you're going to do is put a little bit on the brush, let it string first, and then lay it across. Make sure you put a paper down or something so that when you do do it, it's not gonna get all over the place or all over your table. For the cinnamon one, I just wanted to use a kind of white chocolate glaze, and then I just put it all over the place, mixing it around, and then I just added a little bit of chocolate right over the top of that. You can do this however you would like. This is just how I did it. There are so many options for cheesecake that you can make. If you do try one of these crafts or you make your own flavor, make sure you tag me so that I can check it out. Here is all of them ready to bake. Well, now we're gonna go ahead and bake them and here's what they look like when they come out. These look super delicious, guys. I absolutely love how these came out. 
especially the chocolate one. It looked so delicious. Guys, just remember to label your fake and bake so people don't eat them. Now this part is optional, but if you did put an eye pin, you can go ahead and add your loop and your chain, and then you can close it off. And you'll just repeat that for the rest of these. I am super impressed on how these came out. They look super realistic. And I love the gold touch that I chose for the keychain. Now that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our Facebook group called Anything Art. And if you make any of these creations, I'd love to see what you've done. Just tag me on Facebook. Bye!